Hi guys, I'm just connecting again, um, going live. I'm going to have Wade as my guest, Wade Lee Richards from New York. Uh, it's 8 p.m. with him. We've just had a little bit of issue with him um, being able to connect. And he's just waving at me now. So fingers crossed we can get this happening. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning or evening, wherever you are. Um, yeah, I've just started the live again because uh, Wade, who's my guest from New York, who's a session stylist, um, hasn't been able to connect as yet. So we are just... Oh, hello. There he is. I turned the phone off and restarted it and works. So do you know what, Wade? I just think this is my theory. OK, and I'm 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 sticking with it. Tell me yours. I think there's just our waves are being used so much. Like, uh, I think it's just there's a lot of like wires crossing. I really do. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, hey, <laughs> that, that's my theory. It may not be right. But anyway, here you are. How has your morning gone? It's been really good. Look, I've got this little I don't know, people can't see inside it, but I've actually got my um, chamomile tea with lemon and honey. And I just nice. thought, you know, I'm going to start my day with that. It's kind of become a little ritual. I don't know, do you have a little ritual that you're doing nowadays? Like when you guys wake up and, you know, something you eat yeah, or drink I mean, or what do you have? We to? love, you know, prior to the shutdown, mm -hmm. we love to go to the neighborhood and go to the neighborhood coffee shop. Yeah. And, we find that we're saving so much money by just ah. making coffee at home. And you know, it was our little treat to do, you know, so but, nice. but you realize, you know, yeah. so much yeah. stuff that you don't, you know, you, we didn't need to go get coffee every morning. I make could not agree with you more. Like we, we usually like if there were weekends, I wasn't working um, or, you know, I was starting a bit later or, or something like we'd go down literally down our street, just like what you said. And we'd yeah. get, my, my husband gets a coffee and I get like a really hot soy chai. That's my drink for people who know me on set, et cetera, would know that's my drink. Um, but, you know, I've like not had it for the whole period that we've been hanging around at home. Um, right. And you know what, to be honest, all the money that you spend on it, like you're like, I'm like, I can just get like loose, you know, loose leaf and, I, and I'm just making it myself at home. This isn't soy chai, but... Bad. Yeah. yeah, it's it's great. Yeah. I love it. So it's become like a little ritual. But I was yeah. going to reintroduce you this time because we started the live. Um, so my friend Wade, who is right now in New York, and it's 8 p.m. with you guys. Is that right, Wade? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, Wade and I actually connected because of an online hair course that we were doing called Hair Mastered. And Sam McKnight was our mentor. And there were quite a few of us. And interestingly, I've had quite a few of the friends and people whom I met on that course and I've had them and will continue to have them for these lives. And it's um, interesting. Sometimes you haven't really been across from each other or in the same space. Um, and it's like putting faces now to people and that's really quite interesting and fun. So that's how we connected. Um, and then during this period, we sort of decided, hey, you know, this is a good way of showing something and just ch having a chat. So Wade yeah. has got 10 years experience in the session uh, hair industry. Uh, for those of you who are not hairdressers and don't know what session is, session where it can mean anything from being on set uh, for a campaign, right? Or for an editorial or, um, or maybe with a celebrity client or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, backstage doing shows. So session really just means something that's in that moment and in that time that, that someone is responding to. So, Wade is a session hairstylist uh, based in New York. As I said, he has extensive experience in the fashion industry, in the entertainment industry. Um, Wade, you do a lot of shows. Um, am I right? Both in New York yeah. and, and think, other places. I think, you know, um, allowing yourself to use the title session stylist, like what mm. does that even mean? And I just think putting out fires, if you've put out yes. enough fires, you yeah. know, on set, yes. Yes. then I think you put that title under your belt, I guess. 100%. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, it's a whole yeah. gamut of different, you know, avenues and, in the industry, yeah. especially, you know, being in a big city. And and you have, I mean, you've done some incredible um, editorials. You've done 
work for L, for Harper's, for Vogue, for Marie Claire, for Glamour. And this is just naming a, a few that are already under your belt and obviously growing and will continue to grow once, you know, you guys are able to go back um, face to face. Um, you've worked with a lot of different designers as well backstage for Area, for Christopher John, uh, for Public School. And yeah, so, you know, you, you've obviously got experience, like you said, in Broadway, in... Um, in fashion, in being on set. Is hairstyling, like cutting hair or coloring hair ever going to potentially enter the picture, do you think, after this? Or is it that you've kind of gone, look, I walked away from that. This is me. This is um, what I do. No, because I continue to do that now. You right. Know, I still okay. have yeah. clients that I cut and color. You know, Thanks. I think it's really important, you know, yeah. especially not being behind the chair in a salon yeah. you know yes. if i had it my way and i could mm. be in the salon one or two days i would have loved to do that but yeah i just kept finding that you know yeah. missed opportunities were happening and yeah. i was you know, my heart was really on set i still do like i said a lot of private clients yeah. i have a little studio here in our um apartment and I Perfect. see some best here, you know, as yeah. well. Yeah, that's amazing. And I have obviously been noticing on your Instagram, like during um, the isolation period, you have done some absolutely mind blowing wig work and, and the mannequins that come with it. Uh, honestly, like, I, I mean, if people don't see that, they, they need to see it, guys. Um, where, which one of your Instagrams is the one where people can see that particular work that you're doing at Hair by Wade Lee. Okay, Hair by Wade Lee is the one, guys. Yeah. You need to look at it. You don't have yeah. to be a hairstylist to admire this work, uh, but it's it's truly, it's mind-blowing. I can even see one girl in the back with the green. Yes. Are we able to what see her doing? just for a sec? Yes. Oh, wow. Wait, this is, this is art, like, you know, it's just uh, her son's name Tony in LA. Um, it. his vintage touch is mm -hmm. his handle. He did like old school set, um, yep. with an iron, and mm. I had this big and um, it's synthetic, so yep. I, I did the set on rollers, steamer, and steam yes. it, yep. Yeah, yep. and steamed it, and then yeah, it was, it was fun to do it, and that's so the cool good. thing, um, yeah. The, silver lining with the lockdown is like yeah. all these amazing education and connecting it's so weird like people that yeah. i admired and, and adored like you and now like oh, this time it's really you. allowed us to connect Vice you know so, it's so cool and that was um you know so that was a live that i did a few weeks ago and amazing amazing yeah. trying to keep myself not going corona crazy 100 percent, and you know as creatives like we almost like we need to use our hands you know it's yeah. not it's like it's hard to explain to someone who is not in the creative industry perhaps but you know we we just need to use our hands and and you know uh people have taken to cooking and baking and making bread and you know all sorts of different uh ways of using our creativity whilst we are you know in this in this period um i suppose for us some of the lockdowns are shifting and moving and um i don't imagine set and production coming back just yet uh but you know hair salons certainly didn't fully close and uh are operating and able to and under certain you know guidelines and and all that so that's kind of one thing so things are obviously looking quite different in different parts of the world um but i just think that being able to connect with um industry people or just creative people or, or just people in general is is a gift we can right now you know like we've got this because of you know we've got social media like you don't have to be in the same space to be able to connect and have a chat um, Wade, when we were talking, we talked about some uh, ways you might be able to show us that you use in your work that potentially people can just use in their, whilst they have some time on their hands to style their hair. So could you go into a little bit more detail of what that is and what you're going to show us? Yeah, of course. Unconventional items mm -hmm. to use to add texture to the hair. These techniques I use backstage, learn backstage, um, yep. assisting other hairdressers. Yep. So I'll start with that. Unconventional items. Okay. I've done this on set um, yep. numerous times, um, mm -hmm. especially with like Afro texture, yep. is to use your rat tail mm -hmm. as a conductor of heat 
yes. to create a curl. Yep. You know, obviously, you'd wrap this around mm -hmm. and then use the flat iron to create, you know, a textured curl. Amazing. So, and this is something that I'd love to use, um, yeah. you know, to touch up little areas in the, especially in the um, hairline, mm -hmm. give it a more natural texture. Yep. Because it's other things, just some wire, you know. Oh, um, wow. Okay. A lot of hairdressers know the old rick racking trick, and sometimes yes. I still use it for, yeah. you know, to build, um, mm -hmm. to build base. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm building, you know, some kind of hair structure, piece of metal, yeah, that you could have wrapped and do the figure eight rick mm -hmm. racking around this. Or you can create beach waves by, you know, changing the, the different ways. Uh, um, so this is kind of the idea. I have one more yeah. thing that I found when I was upstairs. I was like, oh, our, our mm. metal straws. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've never used this on set, but yes. why not? You know, this why is some not? idea. So this is what I chose for this particular look. Yeah. Just using um, sheets of aluminum foil that you would use to foil yep. hair to color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are some uh, campfire skewers. Right, wow. And I just okay. wrapped these around. Mm -hmm. so, so much of my time I found trying to perfect something that you yes. lose sight of what you're really doing. Yes. And yes. sometimes you just gotta go in and just do it. And yep. so, I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to wrap this. It's just mm. wrapping it so it's completely around the piece. Yes. And I'm yep. going to use two of them. Mm -hmm. I, earlier today, I cut, uh, I just kind of went in and razor cut this into a kind mm. of like mod uh, mullet. Yeah. And I want it. to add some cool like texture. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I used the two of them Mm -hmm. and did a figure eight and wrapping the hair around mm -hmm. so that when the heat goes there, it really pushes um, the wave so yeah. that it adds a really big, um, a big wave instead of something really tight. Yes, this is so innovative, um, Wade. Like, uh, I mean, you know, we, we all kind of do Rick Rack, I suppose, on set and stuff like that. But I love the idea of the aluminum foil because it's such a conductor of heat. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you can just use the aluminum foil as well mm -hmm. by itself. You, know, you don't, but this definitely has, holds a little bit more structures. If you have a bunch of them, you yeah. know, instead of like taking them out and then putting the clips in yep. to hold it, just keep mm -hmm. it already in set, you know, just mm -hmm. really let it cool down while yep. these are in there because they're so light, yes. they can, you know, sit in the hair. What sort of um, pattern do you recommend is the best? Because considering that the way that the wave will fall, do you do you have a specific feel for that that you want to tell yeah. us? Yeah. So um, on this section, mm -hmm. I wrapped it back. Okay. Yeah. Away from the face, mm -hmm. just to kind of open that up because I want to keep that you know really cool texture of the mullet sure. open. Sure. Yep. It's not going towards the face, it's going away. Yep. Um, the back one, I just took big sections too. You know, I didn't really mm -hmm. uh, section it out perfectly because yep. sometimes I feel like when you section too, you know, precise, yes. it gives that too done of a hair mm -hmm. look, you know? And it's really important to keep, yep. you know? Yep. It's one thing that I really learned, you know, mm -hmm. through the years of doing mm -hmm. uh, work on set is, yep those kind of tips and nuances to keep the mm. hair looking fresh and mm. cool. Mm -hmm. Just taking some hairspray. Yep. Combing a light section in. With just any hairspray is okay for this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. A, a good one, you know, I always, my go-to is Elnet, but, um, yep. you know, I've used Kenra before that works yep. really well. It doesn't flake up. Sure. Lino gray, I love. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so I'm putting this one in on top. Yeah. And I'm literally pinching the hair into mm -hmm. my palm. Yeah. And 
twisting it around nice. so that it gives it a nice tight um, bevel on the top. Yes. And then so bringing in the bottom piece mm -hmm. and twisting it around again. Mm -hmm. I kind of got chunky fingers. So you got to <laughs> swivel that through. Yep. Yep. And then again, up on the top, twisting it. Yep. And what the twist is doing is, for one, it's helping keep those littler hairs, because I went in and razored this today. It's okay. helping keep those pinched in, but also, yes. like I said, it's going to give it that nice bevel. Yeah. You must a little bit there, so I'm just kind of pushing that yep. in. Yeah. Tightening that with my finger. I love this. Guys, what do you think of Wade's technique? Like this is this is pretty incredible. Has has anyone else got any tips they'd like to share? Please put them in comments and um, also any questions that you have for Wade as well. So Wade, can I actually ask you a question before anyone else does? Um, the heat that you're using from your iron, right? Uh, yes. What, what sort of temperature do you recommend would be best because we want medium sort of heat for this medium to high but you really need to know the client or model's textures hair if yes she blonde with um you know a lot of processing you're going to yep. want to use a lower heat um right if it's someone who has you know brunette hair that has tough hair and you, she tells you you know my yep. hair doesn't hold curl very well yep. then you can you know, bump that up a little bit yeah 400 what you know but with yep. blondes i wouldn't do more than 350 we're adding you know a bit of a cool you know cool girl mm. wave this is a mullet so you yes. know it's not like a, a really tight uh ringlet that we're you know producing yes. you can do this technique all over with long hair or just even with you know one and do a beautiful spiral you know gorgeous we used to do um that in beauty school with mm. straws Yes. Called a drop set and you yep. know set the hair with yep. uh mousse and so we'll let this um cool this side. Yes. So this side yep. out so we can see. Sure. So Wade, what sort of length of time do you feel um it should be left in? I'm assuming it's based on what result you're after, yeah? Yeah. I mean yeah. I am the the longer it sets, you know, yep. I try to work fast. Yep. so that there's enough time to let it set. And I mean, pe people can do this at home, maybe, you know, uh, because these are totally. all kind of items that we've got sort of around, um, right. you know, just, just sitting around. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. That's awesome. I, I love how the wave is focused sort of in that under the occipital and you know that sort of area where it's like where you want to see a wave rather than like right up top right mm, i love that that looks beautiful and then let's get this and i'll add a bit mm -hmm. uh, wait when you um open up the the um I was going to call it wand. <laughs> when you open up your sections, uh, what's your best? Do you prefer combing it out? Do you prefer like using your hands? What's your? What's I your always go to my hands first. Okay. You know, yeah. I, I find more and more I yeah. use my hands. I feel like that's when it really allows you to put your little touch on it. And yeah, right. Yep. You can do your little tweaks with your hands, and then mm. you know if I feel. Like a little bit more of a brush out than yeah. I'll, you know, use something to. Yeah. This is just a little bit of some molding paste. I see. Yeah. Any favorites there, Wade, that you'd like to share um, with us? We've all, we've all got yeah. some. This it's. I your... love this one by um, Lenore Gray. It's oh, so nice. amazing. Oh, yes. Wow. It's wow. a really nice, muddy yep. texture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That you know adds a, a lot of definition without being really product and mm -hmm. over overkill. You know. Yeah, yeah. And if um, someone has it in the has their own hair like this in the day, or 
or if it's like you know when we go back to set etc you kind of almost want the hair to last the day isn't it you, you don't you don't want it to just have something so heavy that it'll just weigh it down and not yeah. move yeah right i you know i only really experiment mm. a lot with uh changing texture yeah. you know right at the end it's so important to like during this time that we're in the mm. shelter in place to mm. you know play with those products that you have sitting on your shelf that you've yeah. gotten in gift bags and you know mm. Mm. we get so yeah. stuck into what we use and what we like yes. that yes. you might find something that mm. Mm. such a good now, point yeah so kind of worth this a little bit warm it up yeah just using a little bit of hairspray to just kind of okay Does the hairspray weight make it a bit more malleable is that the reason why you would use hairspray on with um yeah, the, yeah. okay it, when when um i just feel like to add more of that i already yep. feel that i have them on my hands so and that's why i like something like alnet because it's very light yes yeah that looks so beautiful i love the haircut as well wade ah uh, thanks <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Did did you say you ra- razor cut the whole thing? Like all of it is razor cut? Yeah, all of it Amazing. is razor cut. Mm-hmm. Um also with this, but this is what I use a lot. Um I cut like probably 80% of the wigs that I cut with yeah. um, with this, yeah. This. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's so and good. I got it on Amazon for so cheap. The wow. blades are very inexpensive yeah. and you know So cuz the thing is with especially working with wigs is mm-hmm. they're so shiny and yes. um you know the yeah texture looks like wiggy so Absolutely. when you cut, cut into it you know with something like this sharp blade like a razor yeah. it really helps cut that shininess out mm-hmm. and make it look more natural texture you know so true so true and I just go in and you know Yeah. Hack, Hack at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it it really yeah. helps. Yeah. Really cheap wigs look very yeah. expensive and cool. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. I I remember having this tool and I still have it in my kit when I trained with Tony and Guy like a million years ago and we had I think it might have even been part of the kit that we were supposed to have or we bought from them. I'm I'm just trying to think. And it just opens up and the blade just goes in and you just like change yeah, the blade. Yeah. yeah. And, That's um, amazing. Yeah, it was the same, you know, same idea. It's serrated, so you only ever get the blade every so often when you're actually cutting. Yeah, so it's it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, I was doing this today. I was like, this is very Tony and Guy. It is, you know, but, old but, school, old school Tony and Guy. But I, school, but I, I love, I, it. love it, you know? I love it. It's look. I mean, I cut my own hair recently, and it's not very different to your dolly. <laughs> yeah, so I love a mullet. Forever for a mullet, like forever, forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. looks absolutely gorgeous